Hello everybody and welcome again to Rovanimi, the official hometown of Santa Claus. Uh, just, I think it could be important to say a small thing about Santa Claus Joulupuk before I start my presentation. Is the, we're talking about DNA. What is in the DNA of the people? Because there are a lot of Dutch people here, there are Flemish people and people who don't really know about Santa Claus. For us, for Finns, we have we believe in Santa Claus Joulupukki since the at least end of the 19th century. We have the first writings about Santa Claus living in Lapland since 1918 and 1928. So really for us, it's in the DNA. Uh, it's in the DNA like my eight-year-old kids, they have angry birds in DNA. So to a certain extent, we have, uh, we have this kind of characters, three characters, maybe, uh, maybe uh, first one was uh, Santa Claus, the second one was Moomin, and now we have the, the, the Angry Birds. Of course, Santa Claus is a folklore character. It's not something that we don't owe the co copyrights, but I'm going to go to that, but, but that's quite, I think, quite important to understand that, that for us, Santa Claus is not just a Coca-Cola invention. For us, it was 60, 70 years before. We have generations of people who have been believing in Santa Claus. But, but my team is that we, I'm going to talk about you about our internet TV, some television, YouTube channel, and also what can we learn about that. Really, I hope that after my 35 minutes, I should have, but after I have 25, <laughs> I, uh, um, you, can, you can say that you also learned something about YouTube. How can YouTube be used, used for travel, marketing, and travel industry? So that's a kind of double goal I, I have today. So um, first we make a show, a YouTube trailer, a trailer that you can find also on you, our YouTube channel, a short video, one minute and a half. <laughs> Hello everybody all over the world. services mainly for travel industry. Uh, it's a private company, it's not subsidized by public authorities. Uh, the website, at the very beginning we created the website santatelevision.com, it was in year 2000, that was the boom of the internet. It was, uh, actually we were about six years too early, and we uh, burned quite much of money. Well, luckily it was not mainly my money at that time, <laughs> but anyway, so, but after that, we, we started YouTube in uh, year 2010, 
and we have been official partner of the YouTube Partner Program since 2013. And uh, we get our revenues mainly from online advertisement. As studios, I'm going to show you a couple of pictures of our studios, which are actually, our studios are mainly existing travel uh, sites. Uh, this is a Pontanemi reindeer farm, about eight kilometers. We do a lot of footage over there. You can see uh, very light equipment we have, but that's what happens today. We don't, you don't need very high, heavy equipment. So most of our footage we do in Santa Claus office, uh, Santa Claus village. Here we're making a video in Santa Claus main post office. So um, we use all kinds of infrastructure. And actually, of course, most important thing is the nature. We have here six months of snow. And we have the reindeer, that's very important. You could just have the street credibility to make uh, Santa Claus videos in a place where there is no reindeer I mean. Well, this is how our uh, YouTube channel looks li look like if, when you come there for the first time. And here is our historical, uh, historical uh, santatelevision.com main page. So, from travel industry point of view, we are kind of a hybrid media. We're not a tourism organization, but we get, so we get our money, our, our goal is to make profits with our, our content. But at the same time, we kind of support, uh, we have integrated this philosophy of, of Santa Claus and Rovaniemi Santa Claus Village, and we of course support, uh, in that way, we support Rovaniemi's Christmas and Santa Claus tourism. And of course, we work, work with uh, uh, Visit Rovaniemi and so on. Uh, and what's important also that we're not only making Santa Claus videos, we are making content uh, for three, uh, four other YouTube channels. For example, here we have, uh, of course, a visit Rovaniemi. We also make uh, uh, some videos for Levi Mountain Resort. We just made a, a Northern Lights video for them. Uh, so why we can talk about YouTube and travel industry? It's it's because it's not only about Santa Tele because of Santa Television, but also because we do have uh, other YouTube channels. Uh, on which we work. Not in exclusivity, but anyway, we have a quite broad experience in that field. So very shortly, um, some facts. I'm going to go quite quickly because uh, time is running. So uh, website has 1.2 million visitors, uh, the SantaTelevision.com. Uh, the Santa Television YouTube channel has about 2 million video views. Um, growth rate 100 person per year. And uh, 80% of, 80 of, uh, of videos were, have been seen in the last two years. It's not one hit. Uh, in Finland, we talk a lot about this lady called, uh, young lady from Piatasari called Moka Poka Hontas or whatever, lady who's imitating the voices of different languages. Uh, Santa Television is not one hit. We have about 190 videos, so we're really long, doing long-term work on that. Where are the travel visitors coming uh, to our channel? Uh, it's not very surprising, the France is the main destination. Uh, I have had trainees in our company who said that when they were kids, they were learned that Santa Claus is coming from Laponie, Père Noël vient de Laponie. So it, to a certain extent, the uh, France is very important for us. Also, Italy, uh, Brazil is, is increasing very quickly. I'm going back to that later on. Um, Spain, Finland, USA. Only 5% USA. It might be quite surprising because YouTube is really a start in, in USA. Uh, the strongest increase we have is in Latin America. Uh, Mexico, Argent Argentina and so on. It's really, that there we have like 300% per, per year increase rates. So every year we make about 40, 50 video, new videos. Uh, and we add uh, new videos, but we also take old ones. And that's an important thing if you have a YouTube channel. Don't leave all the cr crappy first YouTube videos there which are not relevant anymore. Clean your channel, keep your channel clear. Anyway, um, we have only 8,000 subscribers. And that's not very much and that's our problem because we are doing content in, in our YouTube channel in six languages. So we have French, Brazilian, Portuguese, uh, Spanish, Italian, English and Finnish. And uh, it's a bit uh, difficult to have logic of YouTube channel when you have six languages. But again, we have decided not to have six different YouTube like, channels. Uh, Facebook, uh, we have about 25,000 
uh, should be friends, but uh, uh, um, fans. We only start in, with Pinterest, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, Pinterest, we have quite good experience, but I'll talk about that another time. I'm sorry. So here, here you can see some of our most popular videos. What, uh, what is popular in our YouTube channel? It's very much Santa Claus. It's very much Santa, Santa Claus. It's very much reindeer. And it's very much about different languages. So you can see that, uh, you can see this is top 20. Well, let's go to the challenges. Challenges, what are our challenges? Sometimes they are, they are huge. Uh, YouTube is full of appealing, attractive videos. And YouTube is full of travel-related videos, which are brilliant, which have been seen only maybe 500 times. And that's the problem. I mean, uh, if you're making, putting thousands, hundreds of thousands of euros uh, to a great, creating content, you're never sure that really, really it's going to, to fly. Um, today it's more difficult to make, make uh, YouTube hits that maybe like five, four or five years ago. Uh, there are so many comp big competitions today and, uh, and uh, there is this YouTube partner program. So people can make money, so they invest into that. Uh, so there is a lot of content, the competition is very high. Uh, Santa Television is a registered trademark. But however, Santa Claus as such, such is a folklore, folklore character. We don't have any copyrights on that folklore character. Uh, Angry Birds is something which is, which is really copyrighted. Moomin is copyrighted. But that's more, much more challenging, of course, with Santa Claus. Santa Claus. Some other challenges. Seasonality is very, very, uh, very challenging. It's only about seven, eight years that per month, uh, seven, eight weeks that per month that people are interested by our, by our content. But luckily, they come back every Christmas. That's a good point. Christmas comes back every year. And as I told you already, YouTube, the English-speaking uh, world is there's a very big competition. And. Um, we also make videos not only about Santa Claus, but also about Lapland. And those videos, it's much more challenging to make them fly. All right, what kind of lessons, what kind of lessons could we make about Santa Television? So what kind of que questions you should ask before you go full speed uh, to investing, putting, creating a lot of travel uh, content uh, to YouTube? Uh, you, you, you should ask, what is your main goal? How, how, does, how do YouTube videos support your online marketing? That's a very basic question, but I, sometimes I have a feeling that people go, they cre yeah, decide to create YouTube content, videos and everything just beca because the others are doing that. You should have your own vision and a strategy, how, what are you going to do with that? Uh, we all create, uh, dream about creating viral hits, especially public uh, tourism offices, organizations. They dream about that. It's very fancy to say, oh, we make a video which has been seen one, one million times. Local press is going to talk about that. Sometimes there is even quite much hype about that. But uh, what is important, is, is it really important to try to uh, uh, hunt for the, the hits or really make videos that, that are, bring a real added value for travelers and appeal and attract them to come to your destination? How to be noticed, how to be different? Again, it's very difficult to be, to, be, to be seen in YouTube. And then very important, as I told you already, we have a, a here, travelers are coming mainly in France and from Italy. Uh, more a lot of people from Spain. And same in YouTube, we have, we, have, we have a popularity over there. But the problem is that our viewers, they are kids. I mean, if I put Santa Claus videos in English, 95% of French kids or French mothers with the kids, they don't understand anything. And we are in Europe of mosaic of different languages and cultures, and that's very challenging. And uh, uh, how many languages should you, should you offer content? And we, are, we have uh, in YouTube six languages, Facebook uh, uh, six languages, and it's a lot of Pinterest we have in eight, la eight, eight languages. It's a lot of work, I mean, for a point of view of administrating those social medias. It's difficult to really involve, uh, participate, your, get your funds active, and so on. 
And what about the other, other social media? If you make video content, definitely you should not only make video content uh, or for you, only for YouTube. And I think that, for example, Instagram might be very interesting in the future uh, in the way of for distributing the video content. It is already, but it, it might gain a lot of popularity. Well, some general advice, what, what, what we have learned. Well, if you want to get you popular and seen uh, YouTube videos, there's no silver bullet. Maybe some practice, best practices. And in the tourism field, it's always good to have funny ideas, uh, crazy ideas, uh, if you want people videos to get fly, but you also need, you know, you get a little got a lot of money for communication and content creation and good luck, you know. Uh, maybe about the wow factor. I mean, this is not very wow factor to show points on the PowerPoint, but wow factor is very important and humor is important. But at the same time, if you make videos which are too far from the reality of the people who are watching those videos, uh, the traveler's real reality, uh, then there is a kind of risk. Uh, it might be that you. you that those videos are really not uh, bringing added value. Then um, I'm, we're going to see some photo uh, images, but you're going to see that YouTube and travel industry trying to make timeless videos, videos that people can watch two or three years after. Because videos they are quite often flying only on the on the second or third year. Here we have a very nice Santa Claus video, but statistics. I'm not going to show the video, but statistics. You can see that for first Christmas it was flying a bit, and then and then it's really, and now soon it's going to be one million. So this video had it was timeless video. It has a life expectancy for about four or five years. So put put your money. I'd recommend you to put money on the videos that people can watch quite a long time, or events that are coming back every year. Of course, events they change a bit from year to another, but. Again, if you make promotion videos or information videos, it can be very useful for these kind of items. Uh, this is another example. This is from Santa Claus web, web channel. Um, this is not about Santa Claus, even though this guy looks a bit like Santa Claus. It's about Kemi Icebreaker. We have in the coastal Lapland, we have the Kemi Icebreaker. And, and uh, in this video, you can see that it was one year online, and then it started to fly in winter, and after that it has been doing very decent score. And we have almost about 200,000 video views. So you think the timeless aspect is very important. Okay, some general advice. As I told you, we believe in coherent, fami coherent families of YouTube videos that can offer rich information, useful information. We have had, we have had these six languages. It's a bit difficult to administrate, but in our case, at least, when, when people are looking for content on their mother tongue, it can be useful. And also, the important thing is that, ah, this is very good lesson. It's very difficult. We have been talking, the French people have been, French, uh, Eric was talking about the, um, the difficulty of evaluation of impact. This is, it's very, if you put money to YouTube videos, it's extremely important, difficult to evaluate the impact. Uh, we can, I can say, see, at, say at, at least that uh, one, once I was in a hotel, in a hotel called Hotel Arkinus, and there was this night watcher called Erki, and Erki said, Tommy, Tommy, do you make these YouTube videos in Portuguese Brazilian? Isn't it? But yeah, yeah. You know, last week we had one family here from Brazil, and they, they said that they saw this Santa Claus speaking Portuguese, uh, Brazilian Portuguese, and they watched all the videos and they decided to come to Rovaniemi uh, because they saw these funny videos. So at least I know that at least one family has came to Rovaniemi thanks to us. <laughs> <laughs> so some very technical, shortly, very te technical advice. Uh, preserve, uh, reserve enough uh, time and money uh, for your productions and uh, especially for the pre-production. Keep, make short videos, 60 to 100 seconds, seconds, uh, not more than two, uh, two minutes and a half, it's very important. Good music and sound environment is very important. If you go to the website of uh, Visit Finland YouTube channel, the 
the strongest point on those videos, which are not produced by our company, is really, in my opinion, really the music. I really love the music on those videos. And if you look at the comments, for example, there are people are really much, pretty much asking questions about music and so on. And they have two, four million video views, which is a very good score. And I think it's partly, partly thanks to the very good music and sound environment. Ah, then, uh, if you put YouTube videos, pay a lot of attention to the search engine optimization of the videos. Um, and, uh, but sometimes it's very difficult to understand the algorithms of you, uh, YouTube. Uh, because there are sometimes it's about search engine optimization, sometimes about, sometimes about comments, and sometimes about thumb up, and so on. And it's very difficult to understand why certain videos are flying and the others not. If I were really hunting for the hits, I would put on a YouTube, our YouTube channel videos where I would encourage the Finns to insult Swedes and vice versa. That would make video fly because it would be fine, no Finnish Lapland, Swedish Lapland, you don't have Lapland in Sweden, you have Lapland in Finland, blah blah blah. Well, that might, might be not, be not a goal, but sometimes it's really funny things that make videos to fly. Uh, strange things. At least from the human point of view. Maybe not for, uh, a bit strange from the YouTube's uh, uh, algorithm's point of view, but anyway, they're not humans. Um, well, uh, one important point is also this thumbnail preview pictures. I'm going to see you one example of one video uh, which there was a very, in that video there was a very tricky, a very bad preview image and I changed it to this very nice Santa Claus reindeer ride. This uh, uh, Spanish video. And what happened? During one year there was nothing but when we changed the preview image, boom! We have almost 300,000 views in one video. Just because, mainly because we changed the image. So that's quite a funny thing, it might, might happen. Uh, some other technical advice I'll go quite quickly. Uh, it's important if you make YouTube videos, travel videos, try to give them a second chance. I've seen th cases that people put a lot of money to make a YouTube video, travel organizations, and they put it online and they forget it. Of course, if it starts to fly, then they notice again, but they don't, people really don't really pay enough attention to promote them, to keep them to fly. I mean, uh, tourism is a seasonal business. If your video is not uh, flying for the first, first summer, try to relaunch it next summer and so on. Um, subscription is very important. We have to be very successful on that, but try to promote and encourage people to uh, subscribe to your YouTube channel and keep your channel, YouTube channel, clear, clear and understandable. Uh, ah, of course, then they are encouraging your partners. That's a very basic thing. Then small thing, don't buy, don't never ever buy services from Russian or other companies which are promising you half a million video views for $1,000. It doesn't bring you any good. I know one major tourism organization in Scandinavia who used to, who used to do that. And after people started to criticize that, they hide the statistics. <laughs> so you cannot anymore see that, that uh, some people are very, some Vietnamese people are very interested by snowmobiling. <laughs> Just an example. But it also, it can also, if you use by that, that, those kind of services, also it can be that uh, YouTube can, can punish your videos and that you can be uh, banned. So, um, then we have also remarked that we have 25,000 uh, Facebook friends and when we make a new video, uh, we have noticed that, that if we post, like discover a new video, blah, 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 maybe only 11, 12 persons see that. But if we use, let's say, 30, 40 euros, then all of them see the video, uh, at least on their timeline. So, uh, and, and our advertisement. So that can be useful to, to use Facebook to make your videos to fly. It's not very heavy investment because if you make a video, you use hundreds or thousands of euros, but putting 40 euros for YouTube advertisement, that not, not, that's not uh, Facebook advertisement, that's not too much. Um, to end, some ideas, what could be the future of YouTube and travel, in, uh, travel industry in the middle and long term? How much time do I have? Three minutes. Three minutes. Well, short, yeah. Um, consumers are increasingly searching and watching travel information in video format. That's very basic, but that's really true. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's YouTube, if it's uh, Facebook, if it's Instagram, 
maybe uh, Vimeo, but it's really the heavy train. Then the other important thing is that YouTube is eight years old, like my, my kids, they're they are born in the same year, uh, like YouTube. And um, it's very difficult to, to consider that in short term, let's say in the next two, three years, somebody could take the dominating position of YouTube. I would, uh, in short and long, middle term, I would even say the contrary. On the contrary, uh, of course, nobody knows what's going to happen, uh, what's going to happen in long term, but I mean, uh, for the next three, four years, I'm quite sure YouTube's going to be there. Um, smartphone use is increasing very strongly. YouTube is uh, gaining uh, popularity in, in, in um, emerging markets. Very much, as, you, as I already told you, that we have a huge number of people in uh, Latin America who are going to discover, who are discovering our, our YouTube videos, and mainly from uh, some of them first, we are first time they're watching YouTube via mobile phone. So they don't use normal computer, they immediately start with YouTube with, normal, with mobile phone. Uh, also, maybe YouTube will be banned. I mean, uh, if I were you, I would put a lot of money to put, uh, to, to, uh, to make Russian-speaking videos to YouTube. <laughs> because I'm pretty sure that in, in, in a couple of months, uh, the certain followers don't, it, it, it won't be, it won't be, will be banned again, banned. Um, but we have other kind of, in China, people are asking me, Tommy, you have Santa Claus, Chinese, they must be crazy about Santa Claus, why don't you go there, I mean, why, why don't you make videos? Well, in China you cannot see YouTube. Well, you have tens of millions Chinese-speaking people outside, you know, Hong Kong, Taiwan, blah, blah, you can see, but not in mainland China. Uh, very important, uh, there, there is nothing surprising, but the time of the free visibility is likely to be quite much over. We can see the same phenomena already in, uh, in Facebook. We can see already two years ago we saw that in, in Google search engine. So you, tourism organizations, and companies are prob likely to use more and more YouTube, but they're going to pay more and more. And that's a bit sad. Because the biggest risk for all the social medias, including YouTube, uh, uh, Facebook, TripAdvisor, name me, it doesn't matter, is that they put too much advertisement and it becomes uncool. <coughs> because that's what's already happening with, with Facebook on USA. And, uh, well, Facebook bought Instagram but probably now Instagram will be spoiled by the advertisement. So uh, I, we all need to make money, I mean, as companies. But if you are too much greediness, I mean, it might destroy a social media in, in middle or, or long term. But who knows, I mean, YouTube is not only social media. At the same time, YouTube is social media, but it's also the TV of the future. So um, we'll see. Uh, and I hope that anyway, that this could be space for new innovative videos for YouTube. All right. That's about it. Thank you, Tommy. Now, looking at the audience, if there are some questions, because uh, this is the time. Tommy is like a, the YouTube expert, so any question that you would have on YouTube, now is the time to, to ask him. They're a bit of a demure and silent audience, aren't they? What's that? I'm not This morning, I'm not kidding. Um. Ah, I have a question. There you go. Okay. So I have a question. Uh, which do you think is more important for YouTube video? Uh, real title or op well optimized title? Good question. They're both very important, uh, but uh, it's, it depends what you're looking for. I mean, sometimes sometimes if you put crazy title, I might be revealing that instant, but uh, if you want to have long-term success, maybe... Uh, I would say that uh, it, for the travel, travel industry, it's more that it's... Uh, it's uh, optimized for the search engines, but uh, it's, uh, it's important that you have at least your keywords, I mean, uh, and not only, about, for example, Lapland, maybe Finland, not only Rovaniemi, maybe Lapland. This, you don't, don't, don't write, when you write for the, in social media, don't write only for the search engines, but take them into a, a consideration. Uh, 
I don't know if I answered your question. Yes, indeed. I, just based on my experience, yeah. in social media people think about more about matters about the viral and they yeah. forget the optimized. Yeah. And I think that's a mistake that we sometimes make. You need to find a balance on that, certainly, for sure. Any other questions? Yeah, I, I have a question here. This is on? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, thanks for a great lecture. It was some really good advice. Uh, maybe you could just talk briefly about the, the difference between YouTube and Vimeo and, and uh, the difference between using these two platforms. We, our company, we haven't been, do much, we haven't been doing too much for Vimeo. Vimeo traditionally, traditionally uh, maybe Mika is here and can correct me, is more like a, for re video uh, makers. At the beginning, the Vimeo was, was, was made uh, for the people to really have want to show their know-how. And for example, uh, we have another Romanian based company, Flatlight, Flatlight Films, have been putting a lot of things to Vimeo. And uh, in the tourism field, um, YouTube is kind of, the good as point with YouTube is that if you are, if you get a, a hit in, uh, in, a, in a YouTube, it's easier to make communication around that because everybody knows YouTube, but not everybody knows Vimeo. So it sounds a bit more sexy. At the same time, uh, the, the Vimeo is maybe for people are have more decent behavior. They don't, you don't have hate speech. You don't have this kind of uh, that much silly comments. And well, both can be can be useful for for uh, for for um, uh, tra travel industry. I would recommend uh, YouTube, but of course, if you have money, uh, you can put the both. Uh, if you are in Fr France, you may have interest to put also daily motion. There are certain markets where daily motion is strong. Um, in Finland, we have this uh, Ruka tourism, uh, which is a ski resort about 220 kilometers from here. They were using they are using mainly Vimeo, and they have been quite successful for that. They have hundreds of thousands of views. So it's not uh, there is no exclusivity. But again, YouTube is kind of uh, at three, uh, it's kind of 90 percent of the market. The rest is uh, uh, Vimeo, Daily Motion, and so on. Maybe it's 95, by the way. I don't, I don't know the exact figure. Any more questions? Maybe then one last question for me is that uh, obviously you mentioned budget, which is uh, which is sometimes a, a difficult thing to get for for video. And I noticed your video is is very professional. Looks really good. Um, what can you say about uh, the necessity for quality? Because your video quality-wise are very good, but does it always need to be high quality, professional, or would you say a lower end would be good too? Yeah, well, if you there are two kind two kind of videos. If you r really like make fun to make event videos and uh, so on and lower quality v videos, I would say that then for that Facebook and Instagram is the right platform. But if you really putting, I mean. Uh, it would be a shame to destroy your YouTube channel putting there all kind of uh, short videos. Short uh, um, videos who have life, ex life cycle of couple of days, couple of hours. Maybe Facebook or, or, or uh, Instagram is more place for them. But, uh, but it's a question of, uh, of, of destination. But I would, I would keep my YouTube channel, uh, if I would be a tourism destination, uh, quite selective. Selective, but of course, it's money is a big question. It's difficult because uh, today everybody is. You, you saw these aerial images. Uh, they are fancy. Everybody wants uh, aerial images, but uh, drone. You, if you want to have a drone, it costs like one thousand two hundred to two thousand five hundred euros per day. So you, you need to be ready to put some money also. Okay. Well, great. Thank you, Tommy, for this uh, very informative uh, presentation. Thank you. Big hand of applause.